friendly welcome, especially to our guests and visitors today. This is the fourth Sunday after Trinity, and the order of service will be following is Divine Service Setting 3, page 186. It is also printed in full in our bulletin this morning, along with the, the hymns for today. In our prayer, besides those listed, um, you know, after the bulletins were printed, Gary Toon, who we, I mentioned last week, was near death. He passed away on Friday uh, afternoon. So his funeral is going, so remember his family in our prayers, and his funeral will be here on Thursday morning at 11. I think the time is 11, but Thursday, Thursday morning. And um, so that'll be here. And I think that's about it for prayer. Besides, of course, our country on this anniversary, this weekend of the anniversary of our independence. Uh, we'll have a special prayer for our country as well. The opening hymn is hymn number 500, Creator Spirit by His Aid. Before we join in singing that hymn, please take time to rise and greet those around you with a piece of the Lord.
love in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave me and my sins. We kneel. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the step, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
pray. O Lord, grant that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by your governance that your church may joyfully serve you in all godly quietness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. reading for the fourth Sunday after Trinity is from Genesis chapter 50. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, it may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil that we did to him. So they sent a message to Joseph saying, your father gave us gave this command before he died. Say to Joseph, Please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin, because they did evil to you. And now, please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not fear. For am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear, I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 138. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. with the lowly. 
Never be conceited. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. He also told them a parable. Can a blind man lead a blind man? Will they not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone, when he is fully trained, will be like his teacher. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, brother, let me take out the speck that is in your eye, when you yourself do not see the log that is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take out the speck that is in your brother's eye. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, in the life of the world to come. Amen. Receiving for the hymn of the day, 696.
rise. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text uh, is our gospel reading, but I want to pick up reading a little bit earlier in the uh, in the uh, in Luke six. I mean, Jesus, our gospel began with Luke six thirty six. Jesus said, "Be merciful as your Father is merciful." But as I was looking at that this week, at the the context really. For Jesus' words, I want to back up a, a few verses to verse 27. But I say to you who hear, again, these are the words of Jesus, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. To the one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from the one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you, and from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, so do so to them. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies, and do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. This ends the text. You may be seated. Dear Christian friends, well, those words are not the easiest words to hear, are they? Love your enemies? That can be a tough thing to do. How can we do that? Should we even do that? Almost no religion goes this far to command its adherents to love their enemies, but Jesus does. The Christian faith does. But how are we able to do this, and why should we do this? Well, the motivation is clear from Jesus' words after he says, Be merciful. These words are added, as your Father is merciful. So these words are rather tough words that Jesus speaks, but to begin to understand them is to begin and to start by thinking, how does God treat us? How is God merciful to us in Jesus? We can't start with what Jesus demands of us, in fact, in his Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew 5, Jesus says, Be perfect, as your Heavenly Father is perfect. We think, well, how can we be perfect? Again, we have to start with how God treats us. What does God do for us? How does God show us his, his love and mercy? God loved us. He saved us. He sent his Son to be our Savior and die for us even when we were still his enemies. That is part of who God is. So we begin with God's love towards us, and that helps us understand and gives us perspective, allows us to hear Jesus correctly when he says, love your enemies. Because that is first and foremost demonstrated by, to us by God in Jesus. And we remember that we were truly God's enemies. There's no doubt of that. We are described as blind, dead, and enemies of God before God works in us. In Colossians 1, Paul says, You once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds. Or in Ephesians 2, even more so, you were dead in trespasses and sins. And yet God's love was revealed and manifested towards us in Jesus. Last week, we had those great parables of the lost sheep and the lost coin and the lost sons. God's, this is God's character. He seeks the lost. Jesus on the cross pleaded, Father, forgive them. And Paul reminds us that God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Love your enemies. I ran across an interesting quote from Augustine this past week, where he was describing what might at first be considered an inconsistency in Jesus' words. 
Jesus tells us to love our enemies, but aren't our enemies a part of this world around us? And didn't Jesus tell us to not love the world? So which is it? Are we to love the world or not love the world? Again, it's helpful to get some context and clear definitions. And part of the problem between those two thoughts is related to what the creation is like today, what people are like today. The world and everything in it was created by God, especially all human beings, originally perfect and holy, and human beings and especially are created in the image of God. But then this world and human beings became fallen. The sin of Adam and Eve infected humanity, the world, and it changed everything. It corrupted things. That perspective and understanding then helps us to see how we should act and feel towards people and the things around us. We are to love what in the world is still reflecting God's image at the same time that we also reject and yes even hate what in the world is reflective of sin and the rejection of God and this is an interesting point and really showing what is at the heart of our problem because the sinful world around us does the opposite exactly the opposite the sinful world loves the fault, the corruption, the sin, while simultaneously hating the nature and the God in whose image this world was made. We are commanded to hate sin, to hate the flaw and corruption in the world, but to love the nature, the, the way this world was created. We are called to love people in this world who are created in God's image. But this is exactly opposite with how the world operates. Now, sometimes people are perplexed over this rather unique disparity that, that the world's message so often calls for tolerance, but then the so-called tolerance so often leads to opposition to the Christian message and intolerance towards Christian people. We wonder, how can that be? How can tolerance read such intolerance, the reason that the tolerance is there for ideas and not for people, which is again, is exactly opposite to what we are called to as Christian people. We are to treat people with respect. At the same time that we know, you know, we know that all people are created by God, equally valuable in God's sight. And yet, ideas and actions are not equal. Some ideas and actions are bad, including the idea that Satan successfully tempted Adam and Eve with, the idea that they could eat the fruit and declare that, and be like God, knowing good and evil, even really deciding what is good and what is evil, declaring what is good and what is evil, but sinful actions should be by God. I mean, God tells us we should oppose and reject sinful actions, which is consistent with Jesus' words. Judge not, and you will not be judged. You know, sometimes people quote that, again, wrongly, and not seeing that Jesus is not telling us there to ignore the difference between right and wrong. But Jesus calls us there not to condemn people, to not make judgments where we are not called upon to judge, judgments about eternal salvation. Instead of condemning, Jesus tells us we should po help point people to the truth, to recognize the image that God has placed in all people. Which is why Jesus says, do good to those who hate you, bless those who pers persecute you. Blessing means to speak well of. God speaks well of us and blesses us by forgiving and declaring us righteous in his sight because of Christ. Because of what Jesus did. To, the, to one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. How can we hear those words and not think of Jesus our Savior, the action of Christ in his own suffering? And that work of Jesus 
flowed into the lives of his followers. Stephen is the very first martyr and um, the first person killed for his faith in Jesus and, and his words, what his prayer, even while he was being stoned and put to death wrongly, his last words were, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And that prayer was heard by God. Saul was one who was there approving his execution, perhaps insta instigating it, but in fact, and in fact, he continued to go about persecuting and imprisoning believers in Jesus. And yet God didn't hold that sin against him. Saul. In fact, Jesus came and appeared to Saul and called him to faith and made him an apostle and preacher of Jesus. So it helps us to understand these words of Jesus is the love and mercy that God gives to us. That has to be on our mind even before we think about the grace and mercy that we are called upon to dispense as well. God gives us freely. He gives to us without our earning it. He doesn't ask us to merit in some way his blessing before he gives it to us. God is kind to all, even to the ungrateful, the unmerciful. It doesn't mean, of course, that God overlooks, simply overlooks sin or ignores it. He deals with sin in Christ. This is what God does. He puts off judgment in his mercy, and even the final judgment. We know that is, that is delayed because of God's mercy. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count no slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. That's what Peter wrote in his second letter. Our Old Testament reading this, this morning was a great example of it. Joseph and the forgiveness that he gave to his brothers, his brothers who sinned very harshly against him by selling him into slavery. And yet, Joseph was able to see God at work in his own life. And so he forgave his brothers from his heart, not merely because of his father while he was still living, but because he recognized that God had dealt mercifully with him. Love your enemies, Jesus tells us. True love is an act of the will, not our, our emotions. So often our enemies are people we don't like, and yet we're called upon to love them as God loved us, even before we belong to him through faith. Do good to those who hate you. Paul quoted Solomon in, in our epistle reading today from Romans 12, in a way showing that this, this instruction is not unique to Jesus. It is God's teaching throughout time. If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For you will heap burning coals on his head, and the Lord will reward him. Our reward is from God. The motivation, the power to love and forgive comes from God and his treatment of us. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus taught, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Luther, in his small catechism, explained this this way. We pray in this petition that our Heavenly Father would not look at our sins or deny our prayer because of them. We are neither worthy of the things for which we pray, nor have we deserved them, but we ask that he would give them all to us by grace. For we daily sin much and surely deserve nothing but punishment. So we too will sincerely forgive and gladly do good to those who sin against us. Our forgiveness flows out of God's mercy and forgiveness of us. We are called, because God has been merciful to us, we also are to be merciful to others around us, examples of God's grace. And God will reward us. There is a reward, a great reward, not a reward we earn, but Jesus points out that we will be called sons of the Most High. What greater gift could there be? And for God to call us his children. And to be the children of God that we know we are in Christ Jesus. And so we pray as we need to. We pray for the strength to do as we should. To deal 
mercifully with others around us, even those who are our enemies, dealing with them in generosity, love, and mercy, the same way that God has dealt with us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. And may the peace of God which passes all our human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Join us in the offertory creating. Course of action. 
Grant that we who came from many nations with many different languages may become a united people. Support us in defending our liberties and give justice and peace in our land. When times are prosperous, may our hearts be thankful. And in troubled times, do not let our trust in you fail. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord of all, you raised up Joseph according to your plan to exercise authority in Egypt, working good from what was meant only for evil. Work your power in the leaders and authorities of our nation whom you have set in place, that many will be kept alive and protected in this life through their governance. Be with our military personnel, including Mike Parle, Winston Greaser, Matt Hanula, Eric Jazerski, John Jazerski, Eric Johnson, David Polzine, and Nick Polzine. Lord, in your mercy, sustain those in need, especially Zechariah Ailman, Jane Antonson, Joanne Bullman, Bill Carey, Drew Chambers, Doug Chambers, Chris Urban, Matthew Gibson, Bill Coivisto, Tim Jazerski, Pat Johnson, Teresa Coivola, Julie Reinemann, Pam Reinemann, Wyatt Robinson, Ray and Virginia Rodenwald, Dagmar Siebel, Dave Sorensen, Holly Saronin, Dorothy Thorison, Tim, Wendy, and Emily Beer, Brent Burkish, Michelle Clark, Doug, Shirley Elsner, Lou Johnson, Alan Krause, Marie Lupke, Lois, Sue Luke, Deborah McKeever, Jerry Murphy, Martin Schoenfeld, Jeff Stevenson, Adeline Silliman, Alan Sorensen, Donna Spielman, Wally Strock, Adeline Williams, and Elizabeth Zubar, and all who suffer in body or mind. Let them firmly believe that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory to be revealed at Christ's return. Grant them health and healing according to your will. Be with those who mourn the death of loved ones, especially the family of Gary too. Lord, in your mercy. Clear away all grudges, unbelief, and impenitence from us that we may eat and drink of your Son's body and blood with lively faith in his promises and receive the forgiveness you give in this blessed sacrament. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you are merciful, and through Christ have promised that you will neither judge nor condemn us, but graciously forgive all our sins and abundantly provide for all our wants of body and soul. By your Holy Spirit, establish in our hearts a confident faith in your mercy. Teach us in turn to be merciful to our neighbor, that we may not judge or condemn others, but willingly forgive all, and judging only ourselves, lead blessed lives in your fear. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you.
salvation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
every gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us for the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 